What's up, everybody? Welcome back to A Day in Miami with Yuli Monster. Today, I got some great people with me. Right here to my right, I got President Awesome, a.k.a. Dana Brown. <laughs> and he's the GOAT from GOAT Shed. We got Coach Awesome in the building, man. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. And right here to my left, I got the man, the myth, the legend, the founder of BYB, Mike Vasquez. Thank you for coming. Oh, that's me. awesome. Yes, yeah, sir. Appreciate you guys being here. No, Thank you, man. Being, thanks for having us. Yeah, we got the, like, like Ben said, the, the fighting round table here. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to start off big viral moment. Oh, cold. gosh. Yeah. You've been in a ton of viral moments. Your, your, your <laughs> gym is known for viral moments. And then yes, so the other day you had a big event. Where was that, Mexico? Uh, no, no. This last event was in Orlando. Okay. Yeah, the, the chokehold situation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, it was in Orlando. And basically we had this huge fight, like a Stefan Bonner uh, type of fight with Forrest Griffin. You remember that right, in the right. UFC? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was just a war. Yeah. But afterwards, the, the decision was a bit controversial. The coach started cursing out the opponent. And uh, basically jumped inside the pit and started chasing after him. The guy was like tremendous, tremendously athletic. Yeah. Like he was dodging like four dudes and it, it was crazy. <laughs> he could not be stopped. And at that point, you know, I, I slid in and uh, climbed up his back and then put him to sleep. And your uh, black belt and jiu-jitsu came into play. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And, and to be honest, um, I, I probably shouldn't tell the story, but I, I had a brawl once at Goat Shed between a couple students and it was escalating and I just had a flashback to that. And when it was escalating, um, it ended up, and I have this on camera because we have security cameras, right? One guy grabbed a chair, like WWE style, oh, and the other guy grabbed a knife <laughs> in the kitchen. Oh, shit. And I ended up putting the guy to sleep to stop everything. And it just reminded me of that moment where it's like, I don't know how this can escalate. Right. And I'm not trying to find out. It just, we can end it right now and it'll, everyone will be safe and, it. and it'll be hilarious. He'll so wake done. up and forget what happened. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he woke up and now I saw a different angle. He wakes up and he stares at me and he kind of looked at me and was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I get it. Well, I, get I it. saw the next day, didn't he, didn't he make a video apologizing for what he did? I, I, I was really surprised at that. I, to be honest, I, I believe why he was inspired to make that was he saw my statement afterwards too, right. where he was expecting that the commission wants to suspend him, by the way. He's a fighter. Okay. He wants, and I was like, do not suspend him. Do not arrest him. None of that. Yeah. Um, he obviously has... You know, uh, a bit of an anger thing, but a lot of fighters do. Yeah. And I rather him get closer to the martial arts than shun him away. Absolutely. And that was the coach in me, right? And uh, I think when he saw that reaction where he's still invited, he's welcome back. Um, he's like, okay, you know, let me own up to this a little bit. That was cool. That was, that's, a, that's a big moment for yeah. for people to do that. You know, own up and become accountable for what they did. So that's cool. Exactly. Definitely. You know. So, brother, I know you're extremely busy with uh, not, now. You're, you know, the president of Karate Combat. You got your gym. And you got you're married. You got a million things going on. How uh, how's how's business? How 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 you handling it? Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, you know, the the gym has always been a passion project, but now more so than ever. Um, you know, we're not really focused on members or or anything like that for the time being. You know, we're just focused on the fighters, getting them prepared for their for their fights. And uh, I'm coaching a lot less, so I've implemented a coaching staff now. And uh, unfortunately, I'm only coaching a couple hours a day, uh, certain fighters, you know, the people I really want to work with. And uh, the rest of the day is dedicated to karate combat, you know. So I'm, I'm pretty selective with which fighters I work with for, for a lot of different reasons, you know, because when you're coaching, you're really putting your heart into your athletes. You know that. Right. And over the course of the years, you know, you invest everything, your heart and soul into someone. And throughout the years, you have different heartbreaks and different things like that. So because of that, um, I'm a little more careful with who I work with. Absolutely. You know, just to tell you a, a very quick story, I had an athlete, and this one was my final straw. He threw his ver very first punch in his life in my gym. Now, first time ever, right? We went 5-0 and amateur, 7-0 and pro. And at that time, he's like, you know what, man? Um, I want to retire. And I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, I mean, you want to retire? You're tired. I, I get that. So we released him from his contract, and two weeks later, he signed with somebody else, fought somewhere else, yeah. um, you know. And it's just like you pay for three meals a day, four, you know, five days a week for four years, train him for free, do all the stuff, fly opponents in, pay for this, pay for that. And it's like, you know, your heart and soul is into this person, and uh, that happens, and you're just like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just not going to do yeah, that. Final straw. Yeah. Like you said, I've been asked, that, you know, am I going to coach? Am I going to manage fighters or anything? And And – my answer is always the same. Like, I, that's not my thing to do. And, and it's hard for me to be able to count on other people, especially knowing how the fight business is. It's a tough business. 
And, uh, you know, you guys, you got guys who want to fight, then they fight, then they really get into it. And you're like, well, hold on, I, I don't know if I want to do this. It's tougher than I thought. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because uh, it's not just about fighting. It's about, you know, business and everything behind the scenes that comes with fighting. Definitely. And, and what's crazy is, you know, many times you, you can lay out this just perfect plan, right? And be like, it's right there. Just go do that. And for some reason, there's just some people that just can't. Yeah. So because of that, and this is something that I've been warned with, with like the most world-class coaches in the world, you know, the, the, the more experienced coaches than me, I'm a younger coach. So the more experienced coaches always warn me, they're like, dude, be more protective of your energy. Be more selective. A guy walks into your gym and on day one, you just give him everything. Yeah. You're like, here's this, here's that. Like, don't do that, man. Yeah. You have to be selective. And over time, I've, I understand, uh, maybe I've hardened a bit, but I've understand like, okay, you, you really have, you know, a fighter needs to earn that attention from the coach Absolutely. and uh, and then that love can prosper somewhere special, right? But uh, you can't give that to somebody on their first day. Not, yeah. not anymore. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm like that too, man. I show love from day one. Yeah. And then uh, I, I let you do what you're going to do and we figure out where you're at. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, I mean, awesome. Where'd you, where, you know, where did the president of Karate Combat, how did that come into play? Man, it's it's really crazy how it happened. So originally, you know, the founders of Karate Combat found me because of Goat Shed. Okay. And they saw I had this unique ability to market a fighter off day one, right? Like I could get a fighter. He could, he could be his first professional fight ever. And within a year, I could make a, a pretty decent brand and, and name from the dude, you know, and, and, and kind of skyrocket, you know, his visibility. And they're like, look, if you can do that for your athletes, can you do that for our roster? So they had hired me as the social media guy, essentially creating storylines around these fighters. Mm -hmm. And within two days, they're like, do you want to be president? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and they're like, your first mission, create a main event for Las Vegas. You know? And that's where we came up with uh, Anthony Pettis versus uh, Benson Henderson which trilogy. Was huge. Yeah. yeah, which was huge. And that was my first event that I created from scratch. That's awesome. So, yeah, no, and yeah. you definitely have the... Like I said, from the beginning, your, your gym's already viral. You've been viral many times. You know how to create those moments, so it, it's, it's been working out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, so. Yeah. Mike, I want to go over to you, man. Um, BYB, it's, it's how many years is it going on? Ten? No, actually, yeah, a little bit over ten. We started uh, uh, right about ten years ago in 2014. I sat down with Dada for the first time. I had just finished my run in NASCAR, and uh, uh, Pepe, my partner, my friend, uh, came up to me and said, uh, you know, I want you to look at this. It's, 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 they're going to go to jail if they keep doing it. And I, he knew that I had experience putting uh, the NASCAR Mexico organization together. So he wanted to see what I thought. So he showed me the video. I said, yeah, I know the, you know, like, fuck yeah, I know the backyard, you know, of course I love it. It's yeah. gritty. You know, it's, it's great, but you know, what do you, what do you want to do? He's like, no, they can't do any more events. We got to see if we can clean this up. Right. So I, uh, you know, you see Dada in the videos. The first thing I said, when you're doing business, you got to have like-minded. You have to, you know. Right. So I said, well, first thing I got to do is meet this guy. You know, where are we coming from? You know, are we going to speak the same or understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, once I met Dada, literally we met for, we went right here in the Grove at Monty's. Uh, mm -hmm. We ate maybe 300 shrimp. And, uh, you know. I know that I ate 250 of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over, you know, over three or four Big hours. Guy. But we got along great. Dada's a great guy. You know him very well. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, just uh, salt of the earth. Had his vision. Was passionate about it. And that was his vision. He had tunnel vision. He wanted that so bad. And uh, and I, I really loved it. And in part, I wanted to do it in, in part for him and the guys in the backyard that were, you know, sweating year after year doing their thing. Right. So, uh, so, yeah, that first meeting, we did our logo. We literally drew our, our, our triangle logo, uh, 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 decided on the ring being a, tri a triangle. Uh, you know, later we had the fans name it, you know, it became the Trigon. Uh, the mighty did, Trigon. Mighty Trigon. <laughs> we did all our patents and trademarks. Before we got out of the gates, we patented the ring, which later on proved to be uh, uh, worthwhile. And, uh, and we started. Literally, uh, that was like in October uh, of 2014. We got together with the guys. We actually found some old video of our first meeting in the backyard with the original uh, uh, backyard fighters where we told them about what BYB was and where it was going. And, and uh, you know, I just found some of those videos a few weeks ago. I sent them over to Don to, to check them out. And it's funny because the same thing we were saying 10 years ago about how we build around our fighters, how we're going to, like you said, very important. We're all about our fighters, right? Without fighters, we're nothing as a promotion. So you got to tell their stories. You got to build your fighters up and show them that there's a plan, 
plan of action for them to get where they want to be if they work hard enough and, and, and of course, and, and have the skill and, and determination to get there. So, uh, so yeah, it was, it was all one uh, uh, beautiful day in August of, uh, of 2014 where it all came together. It's amazing that, you know, you just did your 28th show in, um, in, in New Orleans. Yep. I was there. To, I know I got to commentate the, the main event. Yeah, we you know, know that. So it's amazing to see where the company's going, you know, and I've known you for years. I knew you before even the, the BYB started, so it's amazing to see where you've taken it. I told you at the fight, yeah, it's awesome what you're doing. Thank you, yeah. thank you, yeah. Well, we uh, continue to improve. We, uh, you know, we built a great team. Uh, we have a great matchmaker in Mel Valenzuela, 50-50 fights. We have our lines now on several uh, houses, and you'll see, I've, I've really never seen this before, they're all, you know, very even, uh, very negative 100 plus 100. The uh, fight or two ago, there was one that we were both negative 110, you know, because it was that much of a toss-up. So uh, we love seeing that and, and uh, uh, continue on. But just the team in general, everybody, we, we, we continue to have that, you know, community feeling backyard, you know, uh, uh, where it started, right? right? It started in the backyard in Perrine. The community came together for the events. There was no fights. There was no shootings in Perrine. The day that Dada had a fight, everybody was there in peace, having a good time. And, uh, and, and I try to replicate that feeling in, in, you know, at our venues with our fans, you know, being very, you know, you'll see me in an event, you'll never see me sit down in the same place twice. I'm literally moving around the room, talking to people, you know, eyes on everything, just making sure everybody's uh, flowing, everything's uh, going well. For sure. The, the, you guys as, as, you know, presidents and, you know, and, and the main guys in the fight game, you guys hardly even watch the fights. You guys are around shaking hands, oh, kissing babies and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm picking your brain right now. I mean, it's awesome to hear because obviously you have tremendously more experience than me. Tremendously. I've only been doing this for seven months. Karate Combat's been around for six years, but I've been president for seven months. You've been around 10 years. It's unbelievable. you know. So definitely after this, I'd love to pick your brain more. But hearing sure. your story, actually, I'm like really putting myself in those shoes. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah, the I first 11 events, we actually... Uh, before we were able to build the staff, right, when we were building, because right, you, you build a foundation, much like Karate Combat has very good foundation, and you build up from there. You don't start at the top and, and, and try to reinforce later. Uh, but the first 11 shows before I was able to bring in our, our CEO, Greg Bloom, uh, you know, I did everything uh, outside of the matchmaking, you know, from the hotel, the travel, the venues, the site visits, you know, and, wow. and uh, uh, so it, it got to – back then we were doing two events, then four events, then six events a year. Once it got past, uh, you know, that now that we're doing one event a month, I was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it all. Uh, you start building a, a good team and people you can rely on. So, wow, that's a huge. Okay. So we're starting. See, I, I got to walk in and I had a, a team for me, which was great, yeah. but you did it by yourself. You started by yourself. No, and not to mention, love. he has a huge distribution business on his own aside oh from God. this, you know, so. I don't yeah, know. I'm thinking of like everything yeah. my team goes through. I don't know how you did that by yourself in the beginning. That's crazy. Yeah, that's why I, like that's I, said, unbelievable. I got to the point I couldn't affect my main business because one thing fuels the other, right? So uh, uh, I needed to bring that team on and just be smart about it, grow not at the pace that other people wanted us to grow at, but at the pace that we knew was solid to grow at. So, you know, some got people it. were telling you, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's like, eh, wait a minute, we got to do what's right for us, you know, at this stage of our development. And, and I think over time, you know, every year we've improved, I think, our product this year. Uh, even though last year we had some great fights, we had uh, a bare knuckle fight of the year and, 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 and several other uh, uh, great events. I think even this year has continued to con uh, elevate uh, from the matchmaking to the, uh, the, the the fighters. Now we had uh, the acquisition of uh, BKB over in, in the UK, another organization that also started in, two, in 2014. So we actually started at the same time. We're rivals, but friendly rivals. Uh, and then during COVID developed a relationship of, you know, hey, what are you picking each other's brain? What are you doing? How are you getting around this? How are things in your area? And we started to develop the fighter exchange uh, and that grew to uh, us finally acquiring them this year. And, and now between both of us, we have over 200, I think it's over 250 uh, uh, bare knuckle fighters on our rosters. They had, uh, I think, 40 events. We're on 28. So between both of us, we've done 68 events. Uh, and, uh, and we're looking forward to our first show as BYB uh, now in Wales, uh, a week after our Pembroke Pine. That's show. huge, yeah. dude. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm trying to make it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had no idea you guys acquired BKB. That's huge, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you. And 200, you said 250 fighters? Yeah. Wow, very cool. Yeah. 
Holy crap. I had no idea that we, I was going to sit across from you uh, during yeah, this man. podcast. And now I'm really happy I, I am. This is really awesome. Okay. Hey, and feel free to pick, pick his brain during the show. It'd be, no, know, no, no, definitely. And yeah, because right now um, our roster is about the same. We have about 220 fighters. Okay. And we're throwing one event a month. So I'm trying to think about me keeping my fighters active. So very similar, very similar spots, idea. Right? Okay. And yeah. I was, okay. I was a little worried. This is so cool. Definitely, I, I would love to pick your brain more sure. in the future for sure. Absolutely. Wow, this is awesome. Mutual. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for setting this up, Of course, man. Of course bro. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, you mentioned something earlier I, w- I want you to kind of speak on. was um, you no know, One of the first things you did was pat in the triangle, the trigon. Yep. Later, in, later on, that came into play. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us how? Yeah, I was actually on my way to an event, uh, a charity event here locally with Claudia Trejos. And I forgot who it was. Send me a picture of uh, another promotion advertising that they invented the new uh, fighting surface, the best fighting surface uh, uh, in combat sports. And up to there, I was in agreement with them, but uh, no, they didn't invent it. It was a triangle ring, uh, identical to ours in every way, shape, or form. Uh, They actually had uh, the people that built our ring for us built it for them, not understanding that patents... Uh, even the ring builder, when I spoke to him, he said, uh, well, you can't patent a triangle ring. I said, well, yeah, I did, <laughs> you know, and just like the UFC patented the, uh, octagon, octagon right. uh, you know, we were forward thinking that way. And, and, uh, a- another big promotion, uh, uh, came through and did a big show in, in Texas. They brought Metallica out there and, uh, they didn't do bare knuckle. They had these little gloves on. But yeah, they uh, we send them a, a nice letter saying, hey, you might want to rethink this, you know, or, or at least work together in, to coordinate this. They blew it off. Uh, you know, they thought, again, this big organization, I guess they thought they could just roll over us. You know, hey, these guys are small. They're in Miami, Dada 5000, you know, who is this other guy? Uh, uh, but they found out uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, the patent was solid and they later uh, settled the, the case and stopped using the Holy triangle crap. rings. So, I yeah. thought that was you. Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. that event was BYB. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. this is nuts! Yeah. Wow, how and you know what's pretty cool about that? I just I marketed yourself too, right? Yeah, it's like because well, right, they- me as a fan, right? I, I'm thinking, oh, that that was you. Like they agreed. They agreed with us, saying it was the best uh, fighting surface yeah, in yeah, combat yeah. sports, and uh, you know, and all that. So we were happy about that portion. We we're like, yeah, we agreed, but uh, no. So slow down a little bit. It's not yours; it's ours. And uh, uh, yeah, that that was uh, you know, go, went through the courts and. Uh, Eventually, they, they read the writing on the wall. Yeah. I know. I'm not supposed to ask the questions. I have a no, question no, for you. Brother, no, so, no, no. I'm very curious. I, I'm pretty I, open about anything. I, so. I'm a decently creative person, so I can imagine why you came up with the triangle, but I just want to hear from you. Why, why the triangle? Well, when we started, we wanted to, you know, to be different, right? We wanted to be a different kind of organization. I grew up in, in, in box, watching boxing. You know, it was Hagler, it was Hearns. Uh, these guys went into the ring to take the other guy's head off they didn't fight for rounds it wasn't like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna the first two rounds i'm gonna fill them out i'm gonna pressure them i'm gonna try to win six of the first no no they want to take your head off uh then as i you know evolved their boxing evolved into what it became promoters weren't putting those fights together they were protecting their records fighters were running around the ring just you know throwing jabs and 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 trying to accumulate rounds got really really boring uh so we wanted to get you know the bare knuckle aspect, shorter fights, quicker fights that ended in the hands of the fighters and not the judges. So in doing that, we also wanted to differentiate ourselves. How, do, how are we different from just anybody else? When you turn on that TV, how do you know it's BYB without looking at any graphics or anything like that? If it's in a square You're ring, right. you won't. You're right. If it's in a round cage, you won't. If somebody's got an octagon, very easily recognizable. Well, what other shapes could work, right? You know, uh, uh, so... Uh, in talking with Dada that first night, I'm telling you, uh, he says, you know, one one night one of our corner posts broke, and we made a uh, a triangle uh, triangle because we only had three corner posts. And I said, are you serious? I said, show me a picture of that, and he did, but it was like you know a long skinny triangle, and I was like, you crazy? I go, that's that fight must have been insane. I go, I like I like that though, but it's it can't be you know a long skinny triangle. It's got to be three equal sides. We've got to play the angles at, you know, uh, uh, 360 degree corners. All right, that's the tightest in combat sports. Nobody can get it tighter than 60 degrees without being, you know, a silly kind of shape. So, all right, three equal sides. Then it became, all right, how long, how wide do we, how wide do we make this, right? How long? 
So we played with some measurements. Our first cage that we did, because the first time we did it as a cage, it was three eighteen foot sides. Okay. Uh, and that was tiny. Uh, yes, but that's, that, that's very tiny. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. uh, so then we evolved after our second event. We decided, uh, you know, because we were looking. It's always for me. I know the broadcast is an important aspect because the majority of the people see in the broadcast. But for me, it's very important the people in the venue, right? The people that paid the ticket to come and see the event, to have that experience, that they get a good shot from whatever chair. So you'll see me, I have chairman duties, but that all that means is I sit in every chair at every table and I make sure that it's properly aligned. If not, I make the adjustments to make sure everybody has that good experience. So in the cage, it was great, but still the fencing was a little bit of a, a, a you know, of a detraction. So then we said, you know what, maybe let's, let's try this triangle ring. Let's see if we can make it in a boxing ring. And, and we played with the dimensions and we made it a little bit bigger. Uh, so it's three, it's almost 21 foot from corner pad to corner pad. It's about a little okay. bit over 20 feet. I got feet. you. I know exactly. Okay, so it's perfect. a little bigger, uh, but it's still, what it does is it pushes the action to the middle. Of course. Right? Yeah. So you don't want to be in one of the, in the tightest corner in combat sports, 60 degrees. You want to fight in the middle and push your, your, your opponent to one of those corners. Right? So, and that's what it does. It really does. I mean, you've been in it. Absolutely. it the guys meet exactly. in the middle, they bang and, and, you know, eventually somebody will, will retreat possibly that corner and they can get finished if they don't work out of it. But, in the 60-degree corner, you can't slide like in a boxing ring side to side or run mm. like in an old you fight coming forward. You know, you literally have to fight your way out of the corner, which is, again, we're trying to put all the best parts of combat sports into one product, into one, you know, and, and make those fights exciting. And this last event, nothing went to the judges. Yeah. Usually, oh, wow. yeah, Jeez. usually oh, we're man. 90 okay. or above knockout rate, you know, nice, knockout TKO nice, rate, nice, which nice, gives, nice. like I said, keeping the fights in the hands of the, the, of the fighters and, Keeping the judges out of it as much as possible. Of course, yeah. yeah. This time around, it was a hundred, a uh, hundred percent because I was uh, the main, the co-main event was uh, two women, and not to say nothing from women because they're they're beasts and they they sure. you know. But usually, you know, women fight kind of they're tougher than guys. They go the distance, and this one ended fast. First round, you know, it was wow. I, I think only one fight made it to the second round. Yeah, uh, and which is you know a little too fast for me. I like it yeah. when fights go two or three rounds right, because. Right. You know, it gives that back and flow. It gives that, you know, that fighter that chance, you know, to show himself. He might have not had a good first round, but he can come out. And so I like it when it goes a little deeper. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that was a quick night in, yeah. in New Orleans. It, it was, was a quick wow. night. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we needed some more time for TV time and everything, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, uh, with karate combat, it's, see, it's a similar concept where you wanted to force the fight in the center. So what we did at Karate Combat is we created a pit where the walls are 45-degree angles. Mm -hmm. It would never work in boxing or, or striking because you end up ground pounding. So it just wouldn't work in the, in the striking scenario. But for MMA scenario or for a fight where you're fighting on the ground, it's perfect because when you fall in that 45-degree pit, you're completely helpless. No. You can't do anything. You're just going to get your ass kicked. So it forces that fighter to be like, I can't allow myself – to back up to the pit wall. Yeah. I need to get into get the center. In center yeah. And then also, you know, that famous showtime kick where you jump off the cage. Right. All of a sudden, we have that every show because you have these pit walls where you can jump off them. Yeah. So it ends up being a really crazy fight. But I knew that was why you decided to do the, the, the triangle because mm -hmm. it forces that fight in the center and it makes for so much more exciting. Fights. Absolutely. It forces you know? the action. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Sure yeah. Uh, you commented about uh, the matchmaking in BYB and I agree with you. It's a 50-50. It's, it's never like a B-side fighter. There's never a boring fight. Guys come even, uh, which I've seen in karate combat as well. You guys, uh, you know, um, I'm not sure who does the matchmaking for karate combat, but it's always a fair fight where you see, you know, in other promotions, you know, the A side walks in or the red side walks in and you're like, no, oh, this doesn't look too even. You know what I mean? So you guys have definitely brought that to the sport where everybody's got their eyes on it. Cause like, man, you never know who's going to win in here. You know? Yeah. And like you said, with, with, uh, with the betting, it's always pretty even, even on the lines outside mm -hmm. of anybody that has to do with the organization, the bet, the better, you know, the guys who, the bookies who make the, the lines are actually putting even as well, yeah. which is huge. I want to talk to you a little bit about karate combat. Well, what does it have coming up right now? So, Karate Combat, we're going on a little tour um, in Asia and the Middle East. Nice. So, we're going to be hitting Singapore, Shanghai, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, a lot of different places. So, we're going to be spending a lot of time there. You know, we just threw an event in Dubai with uh, Luke Rockhold versus Joe Schilling. Huge. Yeah, that was a huge That was the biggest event we've ever done. Um, we had on the streams altogether 51 million uh, streaming views, you know, on uh, uh, Twitter, YouTube, everything combined. So about 51 million. And then on socials, on Fight Week, we had like 197 million views 
uh, on social media fight week on just Karate Combat Instagram. So it was just like insane and, and completely is taking off right now, you know? So oh, it's amazing. We see it. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's going really well. And what? Uh, what's the next event? Uh, next event, we're going to do July 25th. Isn't that next week? Holy yep. shit. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's Thursday. I'm, I'm excited for the event, I promise. <laughs> uh, no, so, okay, back to work. So next week, uh, we got Nashville. Oh, nice. um, and it's going to be our biggest stadium so far. You know, normally... Uh, we sort of have like this very intimate type of vibe, kind of exclusive thing. Um, usually it's invite only, right. you know. This time we have like a stadium of 7,000. Nice. Um, so we're, we're looking to fill that up over there in Nashville. And we have our heavyweight title on the line, as well as a whole lineup of, of really, really great fights. No, that's amazing. That's, that's great. Um, you were saying you are going to Singapore and I speak in places in the Middle East. I know like... Uh... I think one championship is bigger. I like can Singapore, right? Do you have do do do? Does, is there problems with other organizations? <laughs> do, do we talk about this or no? We could. We could talk no, about no, it. We, we can talk about it. But how, how, why did you ask that? I'm curious. Because I know one is from Singapore. Yeah. So oh, this I, is a coincidence. This is a complete yeah, coincidence. Yeah, because coinc- yeah, you said it, and it just, that's what popped in my head. Hold For on. example, I know I don't edit my words. Let me edit this because I need a. How do I go about this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'm damn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stall on a statement about one right now. You don't have to make a, a statement about yeah, the actual. They either have welcomed you or they have not welcomed you. Right. <laughs> yeah. They haven't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they haven't, which I was really disappointed in. Yeah, and it. we'll they, leave it at that. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. there's a lot I want to see. You know how I am. Yeah, 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 I'm a yeah, very, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy Over. conflict. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I really love just arguing with people. It's just fun for me. Uh, and I want to do that. Well, right. we'll leave it at that till when we come back from Thank Singapore. You. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. 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 There'll, be a, me... there'll be a part two to this uh, podcast. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that eventually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we're all kind of in the same business. So yes, I know sometimes yeah. it gets harder in some places. You know, yeah, you know, I, I think that's what it is. When you're the only show in a certain area, you might get defensive of that area. Right, right. You know, and uh, I'm kind of my philosophy is like, oh, you know, there's there's another person here. The tide comes up. There's just more fans for all of us, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to bring their fans. I'm going to bring mine, mm-hmm. and we're all going to do better. Some people aren't like that. Some people are like, no, this is my territory. Don't come here. And it's like, you know, there's different philosophies in business. Uh, so You know, when, when I first started here at BYB locally, I reached out to a lot of the local promoters with that same mentality, right? Why are we fighting over the same two, 3,000 fan, whatever it is, fan base, right? As far as, uh, uh, you know, let's work together. Let's try to make that 3-5 and then 5-7 then and then 7-9 by promoting each other. Hey, if you got a sh- an event, let me know. We'll go out and we'll blast it to our, you know, on our social. Hey, make sure tonight, you know, you watch Karate Combat or, uh, you know, Great Fights on tonight. And when we have a show, you know, do the same. Show some love. You know, if you want to, you know, send some tickets, you know, uh, for us, we'll have our fighters go there. We'll send some tickets for you. Have your fighters. Let's work together to grow. Uh, and that came from my years in NASCAR. For when you're starting something, you need everybody to come together, right? So you work together to bring... So when I brought that here in the combat sports world to the promoters, every promoter looked at me and said, that's a great idea. But in the back of their mind, they're like, this guy's either crazy or <laughs> yeah. he's just trying to take from me and he's got, you know, uh, whatever. So I didn't get much cooperation, but that was uh, the, the mindset was, hey, let's work together. You have fighters that maybe you have under contract, but you can't get them the action that they require, that they need. So if you have six months between their fights, and you want to send him to me and he can fight for, you know, whatever. I have fighters that do MMA. And uh, if I can't slot him in, maybe I can say, hey, I have a buddy that has a, an event. You know, uh, you want to do MMA on this date, you know, and, and, and so forth. But, uh, you know, that really only worked with the guys over at the, at the BKB. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tough, man. I think uh, when, you're, when you're doing something special, a lot of people get intimidated. Yeah. And a lot of people just want to destroy something that's coming up quickly. I, I think it gets intimidating for some people. Yeah, I agree. I, and I, I, I've seen throughout my career in fighting, there's a lot of weird jealousy in the, in the combat sports industry. You know what's crazy? I'll tell you this. So, okay, just so you know, I, I started as an MMA coach. Only seven months ago, I, I was an MMA coach. I have a 3,000 square foot gym, small gym. You know, it, it is what it is. And I started as that, but there were so many people locally, other coaches against me at the time. And it was hard. They were trying to block me in a lot of different areas. But what's great is always the right people believed in me. 
Mm -hmm. Always the right people. Maybe the people that didn't like me, but thank God they weren't that they weren't a big deal. Now that I'm president, I get to open the doors and I'm seeing one, I get to see all the people that used to be against me asking for jobs and opportunities and now they want their fighters to fight for me and now you're the coolest guy yeah now i'm like oh i'm their friend and now i'm you know paying for purses and paying their fight as well or whatever it is now it's it's hilarious how that worked right so now i'm like a genius yeah sure and then what i'm also noticing is i'm getting word from different people like man this when you were getting this job this person was saying not to hire you or this person was saying you know you're a bad person and i'm just like shocked i can't imagine ever going out of my way and being like don't hire that person. That, that's a bad person. Right, right, Unless right. they're actually like a, maybe right, 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 right. Like a dirt bag. Yeah, right? and if I know like, for a fact yeah, that they are. You know, like, yeah. bro, come on. Like, you know, I'm taking care of fighters. I have, it's a nonprofit. Gochi is essentially a nonprofit. Like, I do good things for people. And then I just, I didn't realize that there are these people that really try to hold you down. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's terrible that there's people like that out there. But definitely in the fight community, it's more common than not, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Um, so when it comes to uh, like the business of karate combat, is there any um, is, who's is there an owner? Who yeah, is, yes, or? yes, yes. So um, there are three main owners, um, and these guys they're they're absolute geniuses. So they all have finance backgrounds. You know, they worked on Wall Street, okay. and then they were big fans of combat sports, and they decided to you know create the UFC of karate essentially, right? Because karate is the largest martial art in the world, hands down. So they're like, okay, there's no league for these guys to turn pro. So it started off as like a pure thing for karate artists. That's it, for the karate martial artists to turn pro. But as things evolved and then they wanted to get into the mainstream combat sports, that's why they brought me. You know, so that way I could get it mainstream and, and get the highest level strikers possible to get in there and, and, and fight in the pit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and I'm a fan of karate, so don't get my words wrong or twisted here. But uh, Say it. Uh, yeah, it, it, no, just straight karate yes. before you got the big names involved, weren't going to sell any tickets too much. You know no, I mean? no, they, they weren't. And a big part of it is this. Like, okay, you, you look, let's talk MMA for a moment. You know, you look at the UFC. How many UFC champions had karate backgrounds? It's a handful. It's Leoto Mashida. GSP had a big karate background. Some people don't know that. Um, not too many more, you know, uh, that were UFC champ. Yeah. So a lot of the, the dojos out there, they're Mac dojos. They weren't teaching real karate for a fight. It's not like that, right? We could walk in there and, you know, there's yeah. seven-year-olds with black belts. It's no good. It's no good. <laughs> You know, and that's what we're trying to change. We're trying to... Uh, They're teaching you know, the, the touch of death and stuff, right? Exactly, <laughs> man. So we're, we're trying to create, make karate real again, basically. Okay. You know, and then re-legitimize the art. Okay. So that's the idea. So as, as karate combat, as a business, you guys are growing it to get acquired by somebody? Is that kind of like uh, the plan? No. Well, oh, wow. You asked a really good... You're, this is crazy. You're asking great questions, Thank man. You. So um, what's cool about karate combat is it's the first ever crypto-run sports league. So it's governed by a token. So essentially, there is no owner right now. Everyone can be an owner. So, you know, you, you can buy the token and, and it's uh, backed by Ethereum. So okay. everyone owns the league right now. So you would buy the token and be a point exactly. something uh, owner of the Exactly. Well, that's cool. Exactly. So you, as a fan, you could be a, an owner of exactly. the card. That's cool. Yep, yep. Cool. So essentially, uh, th- that's the way, you know, historically that we're planning to do this where – there is no sports league that kind of goes in that direction. Mm-hmm. So we're the first ever crypto run sports league. And because of that, all the crypto sponsors and all the crypto fans, they're just behind us because we're their first ever sport. Huge. So when you go to these events, that's why a lot of a lot of events used to be very private. We wouldn't even sell tickets. Uh, it was like invite only. Now we're selling tickets and we open it up to the public, mm-hmm. right? But it was just a whole bunch of crypto dudes, you know, like hyper intelligent, hyper successful, just like really cool uh individuals you yeah, know absolutely yeah, yeah so when you go to a karate combat event you just see some of the the just the coolest people ever there's a guy there one of our uh platinum sponsors his name's shib toshi uh he wears this gold mask because he doesn't want people to know his identity but he, <laughs> he made like i don't know like 4.2 billion dollars in crypto wow. and uh, he wants to live a normal life so like he tries to not show <laughs> you know people who he is when he goes out um but it's like super bizarre you'll just see like the coolest individuals ever in these events yeah you know? crypto is like the new wall street but it's a little more wild on the wild side yeah. it's yeah definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and then like you said it best so the 
oh, the main owners of credit companies, the ones that own the most tokens. Just imagine the Wolf on Wall Street. It's just a bunch of those guys. They're just psychopaths. Like, it's awesome. They're like the <laughs> most awesome. fun people ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like drinking, getting drunk, watching the fights. They're screaming. You would never suspect it. They're dressed super normal. They don't treat themselves special. And they're there, they're there with the crowd just going crazy at events. It's That's really awesome. funny. Watch out for the next movie, <laughs> Wolf of Karate Combat. Oh, out soon. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Mike, and uh, with you, um, when, when it, so what's the next BYB event? Uh, should be on your calendar. It's uh, August, August, 10th, August 10th. Yeah, yeah, here in Pembroke Pines uh, at the Charles Dodge Center. Yep. Uh, and then uh, literally one week later, we'll be in Wales. It'll be my first time to Wales. Uh, which is cool because I did, you know, those DNA tests uh, back when and came by. I was 3% from Wales. No, you're Welsh. So I'm, I'm, I'm going home, I guess, <laughs> uh, for, uh, for, for, wow. uh, for an event over there nice. on August 17th. <laughs> yeah, then we're uh, rolling again once a month. We're rolling. Actually, that, in August, we're doing two. Uh, September, we'll be in Denver. And then we're going back to the UK for a run. We're going to be at the O2. Uh, in October and November, we're going to be, oh, I forgot the name of the city, not London. It's just going to be about an hour and a half away Manchester from London. Manchester or something like that? Uh, it's too well, much. You guys, stay right tuned. Now. We'll have another name for you soon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who is the main event for August 10th? Uh, August 10th, I'm not mistaken. It's uh, uh, Cub uh, is fighting um, Cisneros, uh, Cisneros, right? Cisneros, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Cisneros is a tough guy. Yeah, super tough uh, guy. So is Cub. It's going to be a great fight. So is Cub, yeah. Cub uh, had a war against Ryan Jett not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, Way and uh, made the uh, news That's around right. the world. That's yeah, right. it was, uh, I don't know if you saw that one, but a uh, guy came out with a banana, and the other guy slapped him in the face. Banana went flying yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds like a great video. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, went, it went over even Snoop Dogg. Everybody was close to the background. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. It was no, it went, it went crazy viral of memes yeah. and everything because the guy, you know, it was a way and they were walking up to the stage yep, for a yep. face off. Guy's eating a banana after weighing, you know, because, you know, it is like the, the ceremonial weigh-in. So he's eating a banana and the other guy comes and slaps him and the fucking banana goes yeah. flying. He had rumored, the other guy thought that he was going to try to stick the banana in his face, yeah, so he yeah. slapped him before he oh, could. Oh, like preemptively. You know, so it was self defense, okay? Yeah, what yeah, what yeah. state wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> whatever it was. No, and it's, all, you know, and, and it's also like a karma thing because the guy who slapped him ended up losing the fight, but it was a hell of a fight. You know, shout out to both fighters, it was a hell of a fight. Yeah, what a storyline, man. Those are the best to edit on socials. Yeah, <laughs> I already sure. know. Before and after, yeah, exactly. like the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mike, I also wanted to ask you um, on the business side. I know you guys just acquired BKB, mm -hmm. um, making the company you know that much bigger with not only fighters but content and everything that comes with with uh, yep. you know with acquiring a company. Um, what's what's in uh, what's in the mind in the business mind of BYB for the future? Is there you know setting up for acquisition as well? Uh, well, we want to continue growing our product. We want to keep control of it. I mean, we've been like a, you know. Uh, uh, managing it to own it for a long time right build it build it right uh you never know what's in the cards in the future of course you know i'm i'm already going to be 54 next year i'm i got a good 10 15 year run still ahead of me that I, i'd like to run so i'd like to see how far i can take it and then uh you know if if uh uh, uh better people better situation or opportunities come in to grow it even further faster uh we'll definitely look at those but for right now you know, we, we're, we're working and continue to work to, to, to grow it steadily. We don't have to be uh, uh, doing a show every weekend. We don't want to saturate the market. People, you know, you got a wife, you got to go out to dinner once in a while. You got right, something, right, you got right. a trip, you, you got, got kids. You yeah, got, yeah, you got stuff to do, you know, not only me, but the fan base, right? They, you know, the, uh, so even the NFL is the wildest, you know, popular sport. They now 17 ske week schedule. So, you know, you've got to have a window for that crowd to, you know, rest a little bit and come back. NASCAR, same thing. There's always two or three months off. Uh, so we, you know, we want to be year round uh, doing events monthly, but, you know, might get to a point where it's every two weeks. Right. But still some kind of break for people uh, just to not saturate the market and give fighters rest. Because if you do too many events and you have you know, the quality of the fighters comes down also because then you need, you know, 600 fighters instead of 300 fighters or, or, or whatever. So absolutely. Um well, have you have you guys both of you guys this is a question for both of you have you guys uh, thought about making like an app where people would just go straight to the app because i know you're with fuse uh mm -hmm. and fight network as well um where does karate combat get, get so shown? That, that's another unique thing we, we don't really want to be exclusive to anyone so we're free everywhere so it's on youtube on twitter on everything and, and the idea is we just want as many eyes as possible because again it's a crypto run sports league so 
generally speaking, we're not looking to um, you know sign an exclusive deal from streaming anyway. We just want it to be owned by the people. That's the idea of Karate Combat. It's just for the people, owned by the people. You can watch it anywhere. But I mean, maybe there is some you know benefit to having like the big events, right? Uh, and maybe one day having that exclusive. Who knows? You know, there's talks in the company about that but for now it's just free everywhere so a live event for karate combat just tune into youtube, YouTube. Nice. yeah youtube ufc fight pass uh twitter everything we don't call it twitter anymore do we no, it's x, x. x. Yeah. excuse me jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay too. look i just yeah, opened yeah, yeah. up a tw- uh, x excuse me i just opened up an x account so i'm new to this you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. i just learned how to use this yeah, thing yeah. which is a really toxic space just so did I. I got fooled into doing <laughs> that and now like it's on my instagram you can't do nothing oh about man it. <laughs> elon musk is a smart guy yeah yeah, yeah. um what do you think about uh, the growth of combat sports in Miami? Oh man, uh, to be honest, though, I don't. I think it kind of uh, settled down a little bit, um, especially when Titan went away and Combate slowed down a little bit. So because of that, I think the amount of events are actually far less. Am, am I wrong about this statistically? I think the amount of events are way less in Florida than it used to be, um, because last year I feel like Combate itself must have thrown at least like forty events almost. Um, Titan was around too. Yeah. Um, and I know you guys were around, and uh, as well as some different organizations, right. Combat Night and stuff like that. Now it's really hard to get fights, you know, for fighters. And most of my fighters, my fight team has to travel outside of Florida. Yeah. So I think combat sports has, in my opinion, you don't have as many opportunities anymore um, when it comes to fighting. I, I, that's the way I look at it. It's kind of a strange take. I don't know about yours. Well, I mean, I, I, I noticed this, the same two companies that have kind of tailed off a little bit. Um, so on the MMA side, I've seen a couple different boxing promotions. You got Pro Box in Central Florida. UFC's been here what twice now over the last uh, twelve months. Bellator came over to the uh, Hard Rock, I believe, also. So I think, and those hadn't been coming to South Florida for a while. So I think it kind of, you know, and they, they were sellouts as far as the UFC show. Oh yeah, 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 no, yeah. The Bellator biggest was gate short ever in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. So so in that regard, I think we have a a good audience, but we just have so many distractions. Right, I mean, there's just so many things to do in South Florida, and and that's why one of the things that we started looking at, like I think your show next shows on a Thursday, Thursday night events, you know, and we picked that up from uh, 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 what's this guy uh, over in California when we did our show over there in in uh, Roy Enkelbert, uh, you know, he does shows in L.A. He does them Thursday nights, and when we were coordinating our show at his venue over there, and I said, hey, is there any is Friday or Saturday open? He says, no, we do Thursday, and uh, the reasoning was that you know Friday night. Your girlfriend has plans for you. Saturday night, you may be fishing, especially in Miami, fishing with your buddies on the boat, drinking beer all day before you know it. It's nighttime. You know? So, I mean, there's so many distractions. So, I've said, you know what? Thursday night, it's usually an open night and a launch for the weekend. So, you know, it's like, ah, you know, let's go. Let's go uh, watch some fights. So, we did a couple Thursday night shows. They actually worked out pretty well. It's just Friday, Saturday. There's just too much yeah, to do in South Florida. I get you. Jeez, I'm thinking wrong. So, you know what's funny is I'm still adjusting to my position. You, you answered that question like a president of an organization. I answered as a coach. <laughs> 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 right? To get my fighters active. I'm like, yeah, my fighters, yeah. We have to fly them around, you know, outside. So, okay. I answered the question in my other role. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I totally get it. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but the, the good thing about you being president, you've been able to open the door. You know, I've seen it for myself because a lot of the guys who train with you, they do train, they find out of your gym are my friends. And so I've seen, you know, a lot of open doors through Karate Combat, through BYB as well. You know, um, me being signed with BYB, I've been able to open a couple of doors for guys too. So it's it's great to to you know to know you guys first off, and and, and it's great it. to see the fighters being be able to, to fight. We don't make yeah. some money for their family because nobody sees what goes on behind the scenes. They only see you for that you know whatever yeah. amount of minutes that the fight lasts, and, and that's so that's much hard work. You, you know, Yuli, because when we look at each other, sometimes I feel like we don't say much, but I just I don't know. I get it. Yeah. Like, I can look at you and I can get, like, some things. Absolutely. And you do that to me, too. Of course. And uh, we know what the fight life is like. Right. I, I've lived it. And I still, you know, uh, keep myself humble and sometimes, you know, live there with my fighters and sleep in the gym, too, and, and support them. And I don't think many people know what it's like to, you know, live inside of a gym, sleep there, and, and bleed and work every day and get injured and then go fight and cut 30 pounds. And they don't know, right. you know, and... um and while you're doing this, there's still real life going on outside of the fight. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's Whether a mess. Whether you're married, kids, you know, with jobs, right? there's a ton of things that go on that people don't know about. Well, that's why, you know, and, and that's awesome, you know, um, for for me, uh, 
when I met Laura, my, my wife, when she was my girlfriend, she was actually the reason I stopped fighting and, be, and became a coach, you know? And at the time, um, you know, I was juggling the fight life while trying to coach these fighters, trying to be a coach and fighter at the same time. It was not working out while trying to be an adult, you know, while adulting because I was broke <laughs> and I had no money and it was just terrible. And, uh, you know, trying to make ends meet. And, and I remember my, my, she was my girlfriend at the time and she's like, dude, you need to grow up. Like, do you want to be a fighter or you want to be a coach? Like, choose what you want to do with your life and commit to it. Because you're not doing either well by splitting your attention. And she dumped me for nine months. <laughs> you know, I think I told you the story before. And um, in that pursuit of like, becoming a man yeah. and you know knowing that you know i want she to have gave a family you the, the get yeah. your shit together time yeah <laughs> and then those nine months i opened goat shed and I, I did my thing there and i chose my path but i i know what it was like juggling just a normal life and being a fighter and it's just like it's it's not easy at all it's, it's it, not just training there's a lot to it I, absolutely absolutely and like I, I tell everybody it's a lot to it outside of fighting so it's, you know there's nothing about throwing a punch that that you know life just throws at you for sure. Um, so there's a controversial question here for both of you guys. I'm going to ask you first. <laughs> Top three gyms in Miami. Oh, man. We're, and and wait, for gonna, MMA or for which combat sport or gyms, just period, general? Yeah. general? Gyms, period, fight gyms. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm, I definitely have to name my own gym. You know, go check. <laughs> I, I would think for a pro MMA fighter, I, I think for a pro MMA fighter, not for a boxer, I'm not a good gym. For a kickboxer, I'm not a good gym. For a jiu-jitsu guys, I'm not a good gym. For an MMA fighter, I truly believe in Miami there's not a better gym. You're... We just, there's too much behind it. Uh, we have Dean Thomas with us, UFC fighter analyst, Salman. Uh, he was a coach at uh, Shimaev's gym, myself, um, Cade, Jiu Jitsu world champion. We have meal plans. We have a place for you to stay. It's just, there's too much. Yeah. It just can't, I don't think we can be beat in and, Miami. And aside from you know? that, you always have uh, your big name come in and do a couple classes. And stuff exactly, like that, so. exactly, you know? And so I think as far as that, we're good for MMA. Um, and then, you know, I think gyms like KO Zone. Are, are really great for MMA too. Uh, they have Greg Choplin, uh, Diego Devera, you know, very good coaches there. And for MMA, what's a third gym? Man, I mean, it's a far last place. It's very last place, but probably MMA Masters. But like, pro they're like, that's like the worst of the worst. Yeah. You think so? They're, 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 oh, I think it's terrible. I think yeah. their record says for itself. I remember there was one year I did the statistics for gyms in Florida. And I think they had a 67% losing ratio, oh, wow. which is insane. Um, wow, yeah, they, I haven't, they, I haven't they talked didn't have about the that goat for there for a while. They had um, Amanda Nunez, uh, I think she fights out of there, right? Still, no, no, was. no, she left, she was at ATT, right? Oh, was she? At yeah, she was at ATT yeah. during that time, but yeah, so basically, when I first opened Goat Shed, we hit the scene really fast and we were exploding. And MMA Masters made a post about me when I first opened, like kind of roasting me. <laughs> so at that moment, I made a vow that I would never let them go. That I would just like <laughs> any chance I get, they would be smashed, you know. Right. So like it's uh, we're five and zero against them, by the way. Go oh, Chet's wow. five and zero against them, um, and then yeah. So for for the end till the end of time, I will. Not I, but be a you know what? At, at the same time, so yeah, at least you gave them a shout out here <laughs> saying they're, they're they're number three. Yeah, yeah. a far a far three in the <laughs> MMA world. Now then, obviously you got boxing gyms. That's different. That's another world that I don't even know about. Like right. you got. Tigre, great boxing coach. You have Commander. You have uh, Fifth Street Gym. You have, I mean, those are, there's just too many great boxing gyms. Uh, Rubio, Jorge Rubio. There's right. too many. Yeah. So I don't even want, and I don't know that world enough no, to yeah, rank those in Miami gyms. when it comes to like Cuban boxing coaches. Yeah, there's too many, dude. Everyone's sad. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's so many good boxing coaches. It's insane. Yeah, sure. there's a lot. Of, you're right. Yeah. Commander's Cuban. Tigre's Cuban. Uh, Jorge Rubio's yeah. Cuban. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. Mundo Boxing. Mundo Boxing. Pedro Diaz. Oh, dude, yeah. this it's insane. The Cuban boxing in, in my, it's phenomenal. Yeah. You know? That's true. And Mike, controversial question for you is uh, top three BYB fighters for you. Wow. Yeah. Top three BYB fighters as far, uh, you know, as far as the, we, I can do this in, by personality, I can do this by uh, different things, but just on performance yeah. uh, only. Uh, well, Bar Barry Jones is new to our organization. We acquired him through, through BKB, but I think he's probably uh, one of the pound for pound best in the world. Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna, he's going to fight LT. Uh, LT's right up there with him. That's why they're fighting. They're fighting for the championship. So, I mean, those two guys are, are, are studs. Um, and they don't step back. I mean, Barry's got more boxing background, but when he's been in brawls, steps right in there and, and, and still takes care of business. LT knows how to brawl, leads with his forehead, 
You know, I'm trying to tell him it works a little bit more defense because that's not always going to work for you when you run into a guy like Barry Jones. Absolutely. You know, so, uh, uh, but LT, I mean, Gustavo Trujillo, who just uh, had his second fight with us and, and nobody's been out of the first round, you know, with him. Uh, you know, the guy's uh, sorry to interrupt, yeah, you, yeah. but the guy's six and zero. He's only fought eight minutes and six fights. Oh wow! <laughs> and he oh. fought. He fought Ike Villanueva, who's a rock hard, you know, Mexican bull. Yeah, who fought uh, for Bellator? It was a uh, you know, uh, it was a uh, UFC yeah. too. He's just sparking right? people. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, he put him down three wow. times. I think in the first round. No, like and, five. I think in the first round. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, 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 I I don't see anybody in the heavyweight in any where that 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 could really uh uh you know so we're looking we're looking for other people we're working with our friends the brits uh and and some other guys that we're looking to find them more opponents yeah. well you he know? just called out the bkb uh, heavyweight champ so that might be uh something in the works for there yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure yeah, mills yeah. up to something already uh but yeah that's three but there's 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 you can't forget patty patty juarez yeah. on the girls on the female side uh she comes from a long line of you know uh, her barbie juarez and her sister and and all that champion, so uh, yeah, we. Yeah. And they just had a, a girl win the championship in uh, this fight that just passed in New Orleans. Uh, Helen Adam, Peralta, yeah, yeah, Peralta, yeah, who's a beast who beat Christina Ferreira, uh, which is you know another beast in the women's uh, yeah. bare knuckle fighting you know um, league. Um, she had some power. I mean, her first fight with us in Biloxi, I don't think she came. 100% ready. She was probably uh, you know she didn't look uh, uh, as as you know. Sharp as she did. Sharp as she right, did. Right. When I saw her on Thursday, I was like, ooh, this is a different uh, oh. different Helen. And as soon as she threw that first punch, I saw Monica, who's a tough girl and has yeah. been in some wars. Yeah. I saw her expression change. Yeah. Uh, as soon as she got hit the first time, I was like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. When everybody heard that first hit, yeah. pop. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it was over in one round, which, like you said, in, in the girls' fights, they usually end up going the distance or several rounds. Uh, hard to see a stoppage like that. So bare knuckle punching, the sounds are that like you just described it. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. something. No, I, no I, when you see a heavyweight bare knuckle fight, like, oh, <laughs> it's a it's a very unique sound. It's Absolutely. very you just cringe when you hear it. You know, oh, that reminds me. We, in this event in Orlando, we just did. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Rafael Alves the knockout, the jumping switch yeah, kick. Yeah, that sound that, that went viral that, too. Though. That, yeah, that yeah. there's one video with like 80 million views. Yeah. Uh, on, on Instagram, it's well, insane. They actually just talked about that on uh, on Rogan. Uh, on Rogan, yeah. they just yeah, talked yeah. about that on Rogan. I was listening to it. Yeah, man, no. he was out for a few days. Yeah, it was crazy. Did you get to see it? Did you see that? The guy no. jumps up like a switch. He throws his leg and knocks the two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah, it was. We were. He went up with one leg and came yeah, with the other. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Very. Yeah. It was just. I couldn't enjoy. And it, it looks so professional. Yeah, 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 yeah right. And he's done it every time. You yeah. know. It was just. I couldn't enjoy the rest of the night. I just was like so scared for him you know and then uh we visit him in the hospital but they got everything worked out but wow that was yeah yeah those sounds sometimes no oh. no it's it's uh that crack you know it's uh it's, it's like a baseball bat hitting a dome you know yeah and i and i understand where you come from because you know at the end of the night it's fighter safety first and and you know if somebody does go to the hospital for you know an x-ray or something we'll go there after the fight and and i was i was with a, a fighter in, in north in uh, south carolina in rock hill and he had a gash. Uh, Cisneros had, had literally gashed him from here to here. So I went to see him and his wife, and the nurse is stitching him up. And he's telling, he's, you know, how you doing? And we're joking back and forth or whatnot and with his wife and just bringing it, you know, her comfort level back. And, and he starts going, and he's telling us how, as they're stitching him, literally he's got a gash from here to here, how, you know, I love it, you know, BYB. I'll fight for you guys anytime. You know? And the nurse is like, look, she stops. She's like, what's wrong with you people? You know, what's, what's wrong with that? Have you seen your face yet? She's like, oh, it doesn't matter. This is what I find, you know. So it's a special breed. It's a different breed. And, and, and it is. And, it is. And yeah. we're here because of the of them, you know. Right. No, and I agree. It is a different breed. You? I've, 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 you know, I've fought all types of different types of styles. Um, bare knuckle is a different thing. And I, I got guys that I've been fighting with. They box or they do MMA. And I, hey, bare knuckle. Like, no, man. That's no, crazy. you're right. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's completely yeah. different. The person that's willing to to do bare knuckle, it's yeah. it's a scary. Well, it was a process to get it legal, you know, yeah. and 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 in several states, and then get the ABC commission, uh, you know, to to uh, 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 to make it legal. Part of that process was documenting with a doctor, Doctor Lou Durkin, uh, who comes to all our events and he documents all the injuries, right? So we track all injuries going back from our first event, so we can show what percentage, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
head injuries or, or broken nose or, or this and that. And we actually track lower than boxing or MMA for hand injuries, believe it or not, uh, concussions, oh, wow. uh, orbital fractures. The only thing we're slightly above is lacerations, which the knuckles cut. Right. But the you know laceration, you, you get stitched up, you're good to go. Two weeks later, you know we take before and after shots of the fighters. Yeah. And the after shots, it looks like you know it's a horror movie. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. You gotta exactly. make them for Halloween. Yeah, but then a week later, we'll take another. We'll send the fighters. Hey, do me a favor, send me another headshot, and we'll post that one week and two weeks just to show. Look, a week later after a burn up a fight, they're they still got a little tinge of blue or green, you yeah. know, under an eye, or, but, you know, they're good, you know, yeah, and two weeks yeah, later, yeah. they're normal. Yep. Uh, so we document that just to show the ABC and the other states, you know, and that's been part of the reason that, that that's continued to expand because at the first, it's, oh, you're brutal. It's like, wait a minute. It happens every day in the street, across the country, across the world. Bare knuckle, the glove was made to protect the head, the, the head not the hand. Right. I'm sorry, the to hand. protect the hand, not, not the, the head, head. Right. right? So it can hit the head more. Right. You know, and in an era where kids can't head the ball in soccer and all this, the only sport in football, you can't touch a quarterback. The running back can't put his head, you know. So in combat sports, we're like, we think it's actually safer than boxing with gloves on for, you know, 12 rounds and, right. and whatnot. So give the fans what they want and keep the fighters to shorter fights, you know, that, that we think are safer. Speaking about bare knuckle fighters just being different, you're going to laugh your ass off at this. So I had a horrible nightmare one night which is weird because i don't really have nightmares but this this reminded me just talking about how bare knuckle fighters are different right. i had this terrible nightmare where i just woke up in a locker room of a fight and and i'm like what the hell is going on here and they're like hey you're you're fighting bare knuckle you're fighting mike perry right now and i'm in the locker room or warming up i'm like what are you talking about like i don't have to do this anymore i'm a president i'm the president of, an org- of a half a billion dollar organization i don't need to do this and they're like no you're fighting for the world title you're fighting at 205 and i'm like i used to fight 45 and they're like yeah but you're 205 right now and i'm like what the hell's going on i woke up screaming knowing that i had a fight with mike perry i swear to god it was nuts it was the first time i've had in like years it was the scariest thing knowing that i was gonna do bare knuckle Bare knuckles the scariest I hope, sport, I man. Hope it's for BYB. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bare knuckles the yeah. scariest sport, oh, man. Is, you, you, is, what, man. What these guys are willing to do, it's it's. No, you, I've seen some guys that have great boxing records. There was a guy a couple fights ago. who was fifteen and two in boxing. He got hit with his first couple bare knuckle punches. It's different. It was. It's over. It's over. He's it's like. He's like. Ah, I, I, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, Nobody it's, likes it's it, crazy. but you know, you learn to love it, or you. Or you boxers, don't. it's not the same, yeah, right? Yeah. It, they just can't do the same thing. No, it's not. Um, Mike, you were talking about Doc. Why does why does Doc say it's uh, safer? What are like the, the the points that he say that 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 Bernard would be safer? Well, the, the, part of the reasons the fighters are, or the fights are shorter, right. but the actual uh, uh, well, we track, we get boxing data, we get MMA data as far as injury rates, and same thing, uh, uh, finish rates. You know, I think it's like fifty five percent or sixty percent, sixty some percent in MMA, fifty some percent in boxing. As far as most, more than half the fights go the distance. So, in those statistics, when we do our statistics, okay, this weekend we had uh, eight fights. Right. You know. I didn't see anybody with a broken hand. Uh, none of them uh, went the distance. Uh, yeah, none of them went the distance. But the doctor was there, and he does a complete report, and he says stitches, sutures on this person, takes a picture. This person sent to the hospital. Uh, Ike might have had a broken rib. Oh, really? uh, he didn't want to go to the doctor there in New Orleans. He was going to go to the doctor the next day at, at, at his home hospital in Houston, so he yeah. took his paperwork. So I got to check in with him on that. Uh, but as far as, uh, you know, we track the injuries, and we, we rate them, and then we send that to the ABC and to the state commissions and whatnot. And the stats that come back are saying that bare knuckles are, you know, safer. Now. Less hand, less hand fractures, yeah. less orbital bones, less broken noses. Uh, the only thing we're slightly up and it's like a percentage or two at most is lacerations. Right. Yeah. And wow. that's normal. Cause if, even if you get grazed by bare knuckle, you'll get, you know, it's possible cut. Oh yeah. Anyway. Um, another question. Top three restaurants in Miami. I know it's off off topic, but I wanted to throw you guys off a little bit here. So it's crazy. I am a huge foodie, though. Like, like, like I don't. So am I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like four meals a day are at restaurants for right. me, like every single day. Like, I just, that's what I'm going to do. It's So I, I don't, I've never tasted alcohol in my life or tried a drug or anything like that. But my outlet, I emotionally eat. If I'm pissed off or stressed, give me a pint of ice cream or like take me to a, give me a great steak, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm a happy Absolutely. man. Absolutely. So I would say there's a restaurant named Uchi. 
that I absolutely love in Wynwood. It's it has to be my favorite restaurant right now. Um, there's a restaurant named Coat. Also, oh, Coat is good on Wynwood. Yeah, Korean right Steakhouse. Yes, amazing design yeah. district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and beautiful place. Great, yeah. beautiful Korean yeah. Steakhouse. So you got Uchi, you got Coat, and I, I'm doing three right. Yeah, oh, thank God you're gonna say five. <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh, this is too much. <laughs> Number three, ah, oh, it's gonna be. T- no, no, no! Please don't make me do that. <laughs> number, number, number three. Oh, um, Claw, Claw. Never heard that one. Claw is a, a great place. Where's uh, Claw? And it's in Edgewater, close to okay. downtown. Okay. Uh, on the water steakhouse, the best steak in Miami is going to be Claw. Oh, and Shadow Wagyu. There's two. oh Shadow. Yeah, Shadow. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shadow. They're, they're on my list. Yeah, you. Yeah, are, yeah, you I'll take. I'll take that as uh, uh, one of my maybe list. Maybe Shadow yeah, Wagyu yeah, has yeah. to be better than Claw. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're, they're undercover, right? I love them. They're awesome. They're awesome. It, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's two little holes in the wall. Yes, the best food. Oh, the uh, best, the best, the yeah. best, the best. I want to, uh, you know, I know you had your top three right there, but I'm gonna call your dad and say you just say Apple. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> nobody knows. Oh, no. Nobody knows. I think oh, that no. owns a restaurant in Miami oh, it's called no. Apple Day. It's a, it's a healthy food spot. I've been eating there for years. That's actually where I met him. His dad introduced us. So wait till I tell you. I'm bombed that. right now. I totally <laughs> bombed the question. Yeah. Oh no! Hey, you know what? I was setting him up for that one. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I apologize. Hey. My, my father, Apple A. It's been there 35 years. It is the oldest health food restaurant in the history of Miami. Yeah. Gotta check it out. It's on the beach. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. So shout out to Dad, man. Yeah. Thank you. I messed up. <laughs> oh my god, Mike. What do you say? Uh, well, Shadow Wagyu definitely. <clears throat> I I have one by my house in South Miami, and in, in, uh, uh, it's called La La Vida Misma. Okay, and it's an Argentinian, but with an Italian okay. kind of, uh, and they've got tons of uh, you know if you like milanesa they got one that's with plantains on it right awesome. yeah, it's like they've got a thousand different milanesas and and all kinds of they got the croquetas they're totally different i love that place uh third one i mean there's there's so many here uh, i'm gonna keep it simple and go to one of my my basics uh frankie's pizza oh top, top, uh sure. half-baked oh, wow. pizza <laughs> Make take a couple home, keep them in the freezer, yeah, yeah, and yeah. eat them over the course of the no week. Is, uh, I heard yeah. of the last two. I gotta try. Yeah. Well, the, the second one I didn't hear about. I gotta try it. Frankie's Pizza has been around, I think, like fifty years. Over or fifty so, years. Over yeah. 50 years. Westchester. Where... And they just they never de- there was pizza place never delivered. Just recently, they're like on Uber Eats and stuff yeah. like that. But they never used to deliver. You had to come and get closed the pizza, on Mondays. And it's a square pizza. Wow, I would yeah. love to try. See, oh. see, I don't come down to that area yeah. too much. Okay, it's amazing. yeah, you can buy it half baked, so it get you can buy it, take it home, stick it in your freezer, right. and then you put it in your oven for ten minutes at four twenty or whatever it is, yeah. uh, and, wow. and it, for eight minutes, and okay. it's okay. just okay. like it I came out. Of the, out. Yeah. So, so recently, I was just in the Bahamas with a great friend of mine. And uh, they had Frankie's Pizza. They yeah. brought it over from Miami, like ten boxes. Yeah, frozen. Yeah, yeah. They'll sell it to you frozen, where you can warm it up yourself. You know, that's how you put it so in the oven cool. for this one. It's amazing, amazing pizza. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Amazing pizza. Um, yeah. So I got to try the restaurants that I did that I haven't tried. Top before. three for you. We got. I got to know. Top three for me. So Shadow Wagyu is number one for sure. Shout oh wow, shout, number shout, one. Yeah, okay. Shout out to I the guys it. there, uh, and shout out to my guy Yusuf from uh, AMG. Man, he he took me there at the beginning of the year to to eat. And since then, I think I've been paying their light bill. Over at <laughs> um, number two, since we're on Cole Gables, I'll give them a shout out. And their great food is Hillstone. Yeah. I've never been disappointed at Hillstone. Yeah, they're good. Anything you try there, they've been around a long time as well. Great food. Um, man, number three. Oh, wow. Yeah, Ooh. very good with a very mean owner. Thank you. Don't edit that out. We need her back there saying that. Young Lai. Shout out to Young Lai. It's a Thai food restaurant. Very good. The restaurant's probably the size of this table. Uh-huh. Has a line outside, always waiting. Yep. It's amazing. Shout out to Bass, the owner over there. He's my guy. Where's that? 17th Avenue and 8th Street. It's a hole in the wall. So if you're coming down 8th Street, going east towards downtown, right before you get to the light on 17th, which is the Burger King, right before that Burger King is Lung Yai. Little hole in the wall. It's awesome. Aren't you the best. The best. Bass, yeah. the owner, is a Thai guy. Everything is authentic as it gets. Amazing. You can only order once. If, 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 <laughs> yeah. if, if in your first order, you didn't get what you wanted, 
Sorry, get out of here yep. or come back. No soup line. for you. No, no soup for you. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. Do you remember the soup Nazi? Yeah, yeah, of course. No soup for you. Now, <laughs> he's the same exact way, which yeah. is why I've always respected him. He's super mean, you know, yeah. I mean, at least to me. But yeah. I always respect him. I go there, I'm like, okay, I got my table. Okay, I'm going to order extra because yeah. yeah. I can't ask yeah, for it again. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like very, very careful yeah. about it. You can't ask for extra seat or chair. Yeah, I'm very, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the man, though. I love I'm him. Smart. He deserves it. No, amazing, Talented amazing dude. place. Good call, babe. Uh, great spot. Gentlemen, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Guys you guys have been amazing. You. you guys are you guys are role models. You guys are huge entrepreneurs. And besides that, you know, for a guy like me who's a fighter, who's uh, needed opportunities from you guys, you guys have opened the doors to me and many others, you know, um, many others as well. And uh, it's amazing to have you guys in the fight industry. Um, you guys are a blessing to a lot of fighters. And, you know, I, I, I love what you're doing with your company. I see it growing. You know, I've known you for a long time. I was training in Ghost Shed during COVID when no gyms were open and we went viral then too. Um, you as well opened the doors for me. I've been speaking for years. I'm so glad to be a part of BYB. And, uh, you know, looking forward to working with BYB. Big announcement coming now. August 10th is my last fight. I'm retiring from fighting. Unless you offer me a million dollar fight, something like that. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I'll think about it. But uh, I'm looking to step into, you know, behind the scenes, helping fighters and, and doing some content with BYB. And, and wherever I could, you know, be a helping hand. Just the but beginning, brother. Just the beginning. Turning just one page, beginning. starting another that's chapter. Right. That's right. That's right. But I, I truly appreciate both of you guys. And uh, it's been an amazing podcast, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Pleasure. Good to meet nice. you, brother. Mike, thank you. Love you, brother. brother. Love you, too, man. Thank you. Guys, a day in Miami. Coach Awesome from the Ghost Shed. BYB Mike, the founder, the man, the myth, the legend. And you already know, Yuli Monster, fastest knock in combat sports history. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you again soon. Peace.